مجھ سے مانگ میں قوموں کو تجھے میراث میں اور زمین کے انتہائی حصے ملکیت میں دے دوں گا مسیح یسو کے عظیم بابر کے جلالی نام میں آپ تمام نیشنل نیوز دیکھنے والوں پر خدا ان کی سلامتی ہو میں بابری مینول آج سے باپ کو ویلکم کرتا ہوں پروگرام خدا ان کی آواز میں آج ہمارے ساتھ خدا ان کی خادم پاسٹر برینٹ موجود ہے ان کا تعلق ساؤتھ افریقہ سے ہے اور میں ان کا بہت شکر گزار ہوں کہ لاسٹ ایئر بھی جب یہ ہمارے پاس آئے اسٹوڈیو میں تو انہوں نے خدا ان کے کلام اور اسپیشلی پاسٹرز اور لیڈرز کے لیے ہم سے کلام کیا تو آج بھی ان کا بہت خوبصورت پیغام ہے اسپیشلی پاسٹرز اور لیڈرز کے لیے کہ کس طرح سے آپ دوسروں کو انکریج کر سکتے ہیں ان کی حوصلہ افزائی کر سکتے ہیں تو ابھی وقت ہے کہ ہم پاسٹر برینڈ سے خدا ان کا کلام اور اس کی زندہ آواز کو سنیں تو آئیے خدا ان کی زندہ آواز کو سنتے ہیں پاسٹر برینڈ سے جو ضرور آپ سب کے لیے حوصلہ افزا ہوگی اور آپ کو انکریج کرے گی ہیلو ایوری باڈی مائی نیم از برین برینگ آئی ایم اے پاسٹر فروم ساؤتھ افریقہ لیڈر چرچ کولڈ آؤٹ لک چرچ اینڈ ایم آلسو اے ممبر آف این ایپسٹالک ٹیم کولڈ دا نیو کونٹ منسٹریز ٹیم اینڈ اٹس مائی پرولیج ٹو بی ہیئر ان پاکستان وی ہیو بین ڈوئنگ سم لیڈرشپ ٹریننگ وتھ سم آف دا چرچز اینڈ واٹ اے گریٹ جوائے فار می ٹو بی آن نیشنل نیوز ونس اگین آئی واز وتھ یو لاسٹ ایئر وین وی ڈیڈ آر وزٹ اینڈ It's a great privilege for me to be with you once again. And I'm going to take a couple of minutes today to share about leadership. I have been a leader in the church for 30 years now. And for 30 years, I've been studying what it means to be a biblical leader. And what I've discovered is the power of leadership. You see, what happens is that when we grow our leadership, everybody benefits. Everybody wins when the leader gets better. The church grows. The team is more encouraged. Uh, even your family or your business or wherever your place of work might be. If your leadership, your biblical leadership grows, everyone around you wins. And so I want to talk today about good leaders are good encouragers. You see, we call to lead ourselves and we should lead ourselves with courage. To be a leader requires great courage. We lead ourselves with courage and we lead other people with encouragement. The people around you need encouragement. In fact, the Bible tells us that we should encourage one another daily. That means every single day we should be encouraging the people around us. Everyone you meet, they need encouragement and good leaders know how to bring that encouragement to others. Now, to be an encouraging person means you focused on others. People who are encouraging, they always asking questions. They speaking kind words. They focused on others not focused on themselves. Too many leaders are focused on self. That's not encouraging. That's arrogant. Encouraging leaders focus on others. So I want to start by looking at three amazing examples of encouragement from one from the Old Testament, one from the New Testament, and one, it was actually a whole church was an encouraging church, and then show you the power of encouragement that it brings. The first one is Jonathan. Some of you will know the stories about David. Remember David and Goliath and King David. And, and David had a good friend. His friend's name was Jonathan and Jonathan was the son of the king. Jonathan should have been the next king. And yet Jonathan realized, David, my friend, this is God's chosen one. He'll be the next king. And I want to read to you from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 23, verse number 16 and 17. And it says, And Saul's son Jonathan went to David at Horesh and helped him find strength in God. Don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. This is an amazing story because his father Saul was out to kill David. He saw David as a threat. He saw David as the one who was trying to steal his throne. He was jealous, angry and trying to kill David. And yet his very own son, Saul, was friends with David. And he realized David must be worried. David must be fearful. David must be discouraged. And so he went to find David to encourage him. I want you to notice how intentional. To be intentional means you do something on purpose. Jonathan, on purpose, thought to himself, this friend of mine, he needs encouragement. He went to find David to encourage him. He helped him to find strength in God. Now, that's what encouragement means. It means helping people find courage or strength when they're facing a challenge or a problem or an obstacle. How did he do that? Well, notice what it says in the scripture. He addressed his fears head on. He said, David, don't be afraid. Encouragers realize most people struggle with fear. Many people know what God wants them to do. They know what they should do, but it's fear that holds them back. And so Jonathan said to David, David, Don't be afraid. He spoke into that fear and helped him overcome it. He also spoke prophetically over David. Listen, he reminded him about what God had already spoken to him. These were the words, you will be king over Israel. 
Isn't that amazing? You see, even when David was a young boy, remember, he was anointed by the prophet Samuel to be king. Maybe David had told Jonathan, when I was a boy, I was anointed. And now Jonathan was reminding David of what God had said. That's so encouraging. Encouraging. Many times we forget what God has spoken. We forget the prophetic words. But an encouraging leader will know what God has said to someone and will speak prophetically over their lives. Also notice that he gave his friend full support. This is amazing for me because Jonathan could have been insecure. Jonathan could have been thinking, I should be the next king. But instead, he was saying, I'm going to support you. You're going to be the king. I'm going to be your second in command. You have my full support. It's so wonderful to have the support of a leader behind you. That's encouraging. You might feel weak, but when you've got a leader pushing you along, oh, that's so encouraging. That's what encouraging leaders do. They give people their support saying, I'm with you. We can do this. And not just how he changed David's perspective. Really what he was saying to David is, David, you are scared of my father, but let me tell you, my father is more scared of you. He knows God is with you. He knows what's inside. And that's why he's the one who should be scared. He changed the perspective that David had. This is such a beautiful example of Jonathan as an encouraging leader. And I wish that I could be a leader just like this. There's another leader I want to tell you about in the New Testament. One of my favorite leaders, his name is Barnabas. In fact, it tells us in Acts chapter 4, verses 36 and 37, it says, Joseph, a Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas, which means the son of encouragement, sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. Now, What's interesting is his real name was Joseph. Most people have heard of Barnabas, but most don't even know that his real name wasn't Barnabas. That was his nickname. A nickname is the name you give someone when they've got such a strong characteristic in their life that everyone just begins to call you that. Maybe you're so tall, everyone calls you the tall one or you're the shorty or the fat one. They called Barnabas the encourager. Why? Because everywhere he went, he was always encouraging the people around him. He did it so well and so much that people just gave him the name, the encouraging one. What a great friend to have. Now, he was not one of the church leaders in the church in Jerusalem, but it looks like he was the first one. He actually took some property that he owned and he sold the property. He brought the money. He brought it to the apostles and gave it. He said, here apostles, you can use this money any way you you want to help people who are in need. What an encouraging thing to do as a leader to have people come and generously give you their support. And and the example of Barnabas then began to start a trend. More and more people followed his example. He was so encouraging. He set an example and others followed. Now, there was a new church that was planted in Antioch, a brand new church plant. And I think Barnabas was the one he put up his hand. He said, I'm willing to go and support this church. And it says in Acts chapter 11, verses 22 and 23, it says, News of this reached the church in Jerusalem. And they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. I want you to notice just how he expressed this encouragement. He focused on what God was doing. Sometimes we get so focused on problems, we get focused on issues. Barnabas was focused on what God was doing. He was glad and encouraged them to remain true to the Lord. He went on to lead this incredible church. And this church became famous because uh, under Barnabas' leadership, he developed an amazing leadership team of, of different diverse types of people. And from there, Jesus sent them out into the nations. This is what happens when leaders are encouraging. He can gather different people, release what's good inside of them, and build a great team. So let me finish you with one more example. And this one might take you by surprise. It did for me. The church in Corinthians, in, in Corinth, we read the letter of 1 and 2 Corinthians in the New Testament. This was a church that had many problems. They had many issues. But listen to what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 1 and 2. It says in verse number 1, There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the Lord's people, for I know your eagerness to help, and I have been boasting about it to the Macedonians, telling them that since last year you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred the others into action. Don't you love that? Enthusiasm, when a leader is enthusiastic, they encourage others into action. And here was a whole church. This church was enthusiastic about serving God, and their enthusiasm in encouraged other churches to get involved. You see, that's the power of encouragement. Your enthusiasm encourages others to get involved. That's why as leaders, when we set an example, when we model enthusiasm, positivity, when we focused on what God is doing, it inspires the people around us to get involved. 
Encouragement doesn't just mean words, it's a lifestyle. And as a leader, uh, it's our eagerness to help. Sometimes it's our readiness to give. Sometimes it's our enthusiasm as an attitude. Encourage others in our actions. Now, so we see three examples. Jonathan, remember, he went with intentionality and that encouraged his friend. Barnabas spoke words of encouragement. He had the church in Corinth. It was their actions that encouraged. And so the challenge that I want to lead you with Leaders, as we're growing our leadership, leaders are called to get the best out of others. And one of the ways we can get the best out of others by encouraging them. So I hope that you're willing to grow your leadership. And I hope that this will be an area of your leadership that if you would willing to, if we would grow this area of encouragement, you'll see your level of leadership grow. So let me leave you with a quick three questions to ponder. Number one, Take a moment and rate yourself in this critical leadership component. Would others describe you as an encourager? Yes or no? Question number two. Of these three examples, Jonathan, Barnabas, and the church in Corinth, which one stands out most to you and why? What was it about them that inspired you? And then last question. What is one step of intentionality that you can commit to that will grow your encouragement as a leader? I want to encourage you leaders, grow in this area. Become an encourager. Focus on others because as you encourage them, as they get better, you'll get better and the team will win. I hope this helps and I pray that your leadership would continue to grow and I hope that next year I'll be able to do another episode for you here on National Use. God bless and I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Let's spend a moment and pray for this, uh, this area of encouragement. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for every leader who's watching and every person that is watching this show right now. And Father, I pray that you would encourage them and that they would become encouragers of others. I pray that the Christians who are watching and the leaders who are watching would grow and increase their ability to encourage others because as we encourage others, we are encouraged, they are encouraged, and together we will grow. Do this, we ask, in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen.